Ian Murray is the Labour MP for Edinburgh South. He joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. We're being told by Nicola Sturgeon that these remarks from John McDonnell are just a matter of, of democracy, ultimately. Do you agree? Uh, well, I think Richard Leonard in your clip there was absolutely correct. I mean, you couldn't have a manifesto commitment to not hold a second independence referendum and then actually hold one. So there's a problem here in terms of uh, what John MacDonald has said. And uh, it's not the first time that senior members of the Labour leadership have come to Scotland and freelanced on this big issue and got it wrong. So do you believe it was a slip of the tongue or do you believe that this is now the policy that not just John MacDonald, but given how close he is to Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leadership more generally wants to support? Well, I would have hoped it was a slip of the tongue, but given what's been put out since uh, uh, the appearance at the Fringe Festival yesterday, it doesn't seem to be uh, a slip of the tongue at all. And I think that we'd like to hear from the Labour leadership to clarify this, because it's not Scottish Labour Party policy. Um, Richard Leonard sets the policy on this. This is a, uh, an issue that's in the grasp of the uh, devolved Scottish Labour Party, and that should be the policy that holds. I mean, there's no uh, mandate for a second Scottish independence referendum. Um, it was in the manifesto that if it was in uh, set of circumstances that changed in the SNP manifesto and they lost their majority. So there isn't a manifesto commitment for this. There's nobody that wants this. And just look at what the mess that Brexit's given us. Um, we surely shouldn't be going into a divisive uh, second Scottish independence referendum. That would be a disaster for Scotland's economy. This just proves, doesn't it, that since Joanne Lamont made those comments about Scottish Labour being a branch office from London, that nothing's really changed? Well, everything's changed. I mean, Kezia Dugby was hugely successful in changing the entirety of the written constitution uh, of the UK and Scottish Labour parties in terms of who sets policy and who doesn't set policy. But senior people come up from London and a slip of the tongue changes policy. Well, I don't think it's changed policy. The policy still stands. It's a policy that was in our manifesto. There will not be a second independence referendum if Labour are in power. That's a clear policy. Richard Leonard has given that commitment both at UK National Conference September last year and on the Sunday Politics show on BBC uh, in March that you just played the clip off. So that is the policy. And until the policy officially changes, um, then that is the policy that stands. So John McDonald has to urgently clarify uh, what he means by all of this uh, and tell us exactly what he, he plans to do in terms of a request for a second independence referendum. It's quite clear uh, that the only people that have actually um, accepted this and welcomed it is Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP, and that maybe tells you all you need to know. Well, does it perhaps hint at the idea of Labour doing a deal with the SNP if there is a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson and Labour is successful in that? Uh, well, you know, in order for a vote of no confidence to be successful, you need the numbers of all the opposition parties plus about a dozen or 15 uh, Conservative uh, MPs, so the mathematics are pretty clear on what you need to do. All opposition parties would need to work together to get a no vote of no confidence through. But is this the quid uh, pro quo with the SNP getting them on side to actually say, well, look, we'll, we'll say yes to a second independence referendum? Well, I think in grown-up politics, what you do is you work with people when you agree with them, particularly when mathematics are so tight in Westminster and there's such big issues like Brexit on the horizon. And then when you don't agree with them, you don't work with them. So I'd be very much of the view that we need to do everything we possibly can with all opposition parties and members of parliament working together to try and stop Brexit and certainly a no-deal Brexit. But in terms of a second independence referendum, we don't agree with them on that. So we shouldn't be working with them on that. It's a fairly clear mathematical thing that we've got in front of us here. If there's a vote more confidence to bring down uh, the Prime Minister, then it would have to come from the leader of opposition, it'd be up to the SNP and whether or not they wanted to support that. Don't you find yourself in a difficult position electorally, though, because we have an opinion poll, albeit it's only one opinion poll, but it's suggesting that there may be a majority in Scotland for independence. Nicola Sturgeon pointed out in her tweet yesterday that that opinion poll suggested 40% of Labour voters backed independence. You're, you're swimming against the tide here, aren't you? Well, sometimes it's about principle, Gary, rather than a rogue opinion poll that we get here. And the principle is that the Scottish Labour Party believe in the United Kingdom. The UK Labour Party believes in the United Kingdom. We're the United Kingdom uh, Party. We're an internationalist party. And we're against Scottish independence. And therefore, that's a fairly clear thing to stand on principle. Now, if we want to determine policy uh, by what's in the latest opinion poll, then what we could do is do a David Cameron or Boris Johnson and sell the country down the river uh, on the latest opinion poll. We refuse to do that. It's not in Scotland's interest to be out of the EU. And it's not in Scotland's 
Scotland's interest to be out of the UK. It's as simple and straightforward as that. How long does this position hold for? Because Paul Sweeney, who's uh, the Scotland uh, spokesman uh, on the front bench of, for Labour, says that a mandate should be sought at the next Scottish Parliament election, this is for the SNP, before it can have uh, sufficient legitimacy for MPs to consider it. So is this just a position up until 2021? And if the SNP and the Greens manage a, uh, a pro-independence majority, then you would back down? Well, this, is a, this was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I think the, the constitutional wrangling that continues to go on damages Scotland's economy, damages Scotland's culture, damages Scotland's society, and I think we need to get off these constitutional uh, questions. The 2021 election is an opportunity for the people of Scotland to say we've had enough of all of this. Um, if Brexit it looks like it's going to be a disaster, the last thing we need uh, is Skexit as an answer to Brexit, so we shouldn't be going down that route, and the people of Scotland will have to put their cross uh, in the box to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, well, the, well that's a very interesting point point about putting their cross in the box, because if they do put their cross in the box, what are they voting for? Are they voting for John McDonnell's position, where he says, yes, we would have to uh, agree to this, and possibly in the time frame that Nicola Sturgeon set out, Paul Sweeney's position, where he says a mandate of the next election would then be uh, sufficient legitimacy for MPs to consider it, or you put a cross in the box for your position, which is n no under any circumstance. Well, the bottom line here is if people go into a Scottish parliamentary election again in 2021 with the only view in their mind to be about whether or not we should deliver another constitutional upheaval in terms of a referendum of Scottish independence, then they're damaging Scottish public services and damaging Scotland's economy. We need to get into an election in 2021 uh, on the mandate that says that we need to do what's in the best interest of Scotland under the current UK settlement. That would be my uh, proposal. That's what Richard Leonard laid out in your show in March and laid out in September last year. And that should be the proposal going forward. Ian Murray, Labour MP for Edinburgh South, thank you very much. Quarter past eight.